is the Babylonian queen of the night. Ishtar was one of the most prominent Mesopotamian goddesses, a dualistic deity Babylon with a variety of roles. Ishtar defied conventional categories and her influence extended beyond humanity's first civilizations. On display in the British Museum among the artifacts of a hundred ancient and lost civilizations sits the small terracotta relief display known as the Burney relief. It's small measuring around 14, uh, 19 point four inches and in height 14 and a half inches and width 50 by centimeters by 36 centimeters but it is what it depicts that makes it so precious. On the relief is depicted a naked woman with wings flanked by owls. She is standing on the back of two lions. It was made during the era of Hammurabi 1792 to 1750 BC in Babylonia dubbed the Queen of the Night, quote-unquote. The figure is surprisingly well-preserved. She apparently was painted and decorated with okra and other paints at some point, but now all that remains is the naked stone. As we know, the ancients used to paint their statues, even the ancient Greeks, to make them look alive. Now, who is this figure from the old Babylonian period? Why is she portrayed like this, and why did she come to be known as the Queen of the Night? A goddess? Firstly, most agree that the Queen of the Night is almost certainly a goddess. She's wearing a deity's horned headrest for a start. And following that, she also holds the rod and ring symbol in her hands, which is considered sacred. Along with the wings on her back, the lady also has her legs tapered to the bird's talons, which are seen to have gripped into, onto the lion's back. The rod and ring appear repeatedly, mostly described as the god's instruments of measurement and survey. They are also symbols of kingship as they are given to the king by a god or goddess to lay out a temple. In the Epic of Gilgamesh, we hear such a story. The goddess Inanna gives these items, named Miku and Puku, to Gilgamesh as a reward, but he used it very unwisely and ended up causing grief to all women of Uruk. As a result, he lost them and fell into the underworld. In honesty, the terms Puku and Miku have not been translated yet, but they probably resemble the same rod and ring which are God's instruments and symbols of kingship. And in this way, it's helpful to see a depiction of something referenced to in the text to provide context. At the base of the plaque is a motif that represents the mountains and indicates that the woman is standing on high ground. Scholars have different interpretations of the reasons for this, and indeed which goddess act, act exactly the queen of the night could be representing. Experts believe that this plaque could be the replication of the goddess Ishtar, who was a Mesopotamian goddess of sexual love and war. The, excerpts, uh, the experts also thought she might be a goddess Eresh Kigal, or the demoness Lilith, Lilithu, Adam's first wife from the Bible. So she could be Lilith. The experts considered it a statue of Eresh Kigal because of the downward pointing wings on the plaque. If it was depiction of Inanna, then the wings should, be ha should have been ordinarily spread out upwards. The idea was to represent the sky and underworld in this significance. However, there might be an explanation which allows for Inanna. In the story of Inanna's descent to the underworld, the goddess was forced to take off all her ornaments while she was passing through the realm of her sister. Thus, it may be that this depiction of Inanna at the end of this story with downward wings represents this. We are also not helped by lacking a clear provenance for the piece. The Burry relief named after the British antiquities and art dealer Sidney Burney. The artifact is said to have been brought to London by some Lebanese or Syrian leader in the uh, dealer in the 1930s, and we do not even know where it was originally found. In 1936, the plaque was offered first to the British Museum, however they refused to buy it, citing these problems with provenance and that the artifact was not archaeological but instead stolen from Iraq, an accusation some might find ironic. As a result of this rejection, the Bernie relief was passed on 
from one private collection to another in the following few decades. The last of the collectors, Sakamoto Goro, finally sold the plaque to the British Museum for $1.9 million in 2004. A mystery. So, shorn of useful provenance, can we determine anything about this plaque? There is no consensus on who created her, but the plaque was probably intended for an old Babylonian shrine. She has been dated back to around the 19th or 18th century BC and was probably created during the reign of Hammurabi. Initially painted, over time the Bernie relief was lo has lost its colors, but as per scientific research on it, the experts determined that there was red ochre applied all across her body. Gypsum was also maybe used as white pigment for specific areas of the plaque, but this may have formed naturally from salts in groundwater. However, there is help in understanding this plaque from elsewhere. The Queen of the Night has a twin, a nearly identical relief in the Louvre Museum, albeit in a worse state of preservation. But it still has a clear depiction of the nude female character with wings and talons. One critical difference between these two plaques was that the one in the Louvre was standing on two horned animals, who might be gazelles or goats, whereas the one in the British Museum was standing on two lions. Why? We don't know. Not just that, but the same goddess also appears in variants of various small crude or molded plaques in Babylonia between 1850 and 1750 BC. Thermoluminescence tests have confirmed that the Queen of the Night relief was made right in the middle of this dating. So who was she? Some believe she is a goddess, a recognizable member of the Babylonian pantheon. Others consider her a mythological figure, perhaps not a goddess at all, but something more akin to the Greek Furies or Gorgons. She might be the Queen of Sky, Inanna, or the Queen of Underworld, Eresh Kigal. She might be the demoness Lilith, the first wife of Adam, or just a monster. But what the Queen of the Night certainly offers is a window into an ancient lost civilization and their beliefs in gods and monsters. This is on Collective Spark by Bipin Dimri of Historic Mysteries. Please leave your comments and thank you for your support. Please support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.